far as I'm concerned, it's the eighth wonder of the world. I was born in this area, so as, as a baby, I knew what the Humphrey sounded like. It's the largest single cylinder engine in the world. It was manufactured in 1920 at Beardmore's over in their Scotland uh, plant. It was installed between 1923 and 1925. They put the two pumps in. To operate satisfactorily, they had, I think, four years before they got it to run uh, anywhere near its designed output. From there till uh, 1965 it, uh, it ran virtually non-stop, very efficiently. The, the gain with the Humphrey style of thing was the availability of no cost fuel. Now we're in a different world where every ounce, every part of the energy costs. Welcome to Cop Dogler Irrigation Steam Museum, home of the Heritage Engineering listed Humphrey Pump. Join me, Samuel Burridge from SA Water, as I spend time with operators who show me around the preparation, lubrication and operation of the pump itself. We're here at the Humphrey Pump Station. Exciting times, we're about to start the pumps. It all begins here with the gas generators. Lynn, talk me through the process. Well, to start them, firstly, we need to get some kindling wood. And we fill that up to that level. On top of that, we then put wood up to that level and we then fill it right up as far as we can with, with charcoal. Then to get the thing going, some kerosene on the rag, toss it in the hole and light it up and shut the doors. And on the side here, we've got a, um, a fan. Which draws the air through the fire. When we turn on this, this here, that water runs into there. It acts as a preheater and then dribbles over there and back into here and maintains a, a steam chest over the top of this. A full of water, and as the producer gets hotter and hotter, so it produces steam. And so you get a mixture of carbon monoxide and hydrogen coming out of a gas producer, and that is the, the active constituents that produce a gas. And that clean, clean, cool gas then goes through the fans and goes over to the gasometer. This is the gasometer. So we use the valve in the middle for. The valve in the middle. You open that valve to let any air out and so that the gas can come through into the gasometer. Any air comes out there so you've got good gas in the gasometer. And then when you've got good gas you can shut that off and then it, the gasometer will rise out of, its, out of its container and put pressure on to go inside into the Humphrey pump. The next thing we do is we start up the old gas engine over here, the old Crosley. The gasometer, we fill that up and then we oil up the old Crosley gas engine. We drop the compression lever here, and if the gas is good, chook, 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 and away you go. And that drives all the auxiliary power that we require inside the pump and stuff. Uh, when it was operational, it supplied water for the Cobdogger, Loveday, New Campica irrigation areas, about 8,000 acres of irrigation. The output of the Humphrey pump was about 1,400,000 gallons an hour. We're here in the pump hole. Then we want to start the pumps in a couple of hours. What should we be doing now? The first thing we do when we come down here in the morning is that we would close a valve over there that prevents any water going between the two wells. And then we would then open this valve, which would allow water from the river to come into this well. So then we have a full well to be able to start the pump. The uniqueness of this pump was that it, it developed a system so different to what was accepted uh, as a means of shifting water from one level to a higher level. The, the Humphrey pump utilises the water as the piston and the flow and uh, the oscillation in the U-pot creates the uh, effect of a four-stroke uh, engine. This here 
is our test slide. When the gas is good, it's a nice, strong, straw-coloured flame that comes out to about there. All right, we can get the Humphrey pump. Lynn, what do we do in regards to preparation work? Well, after we do the outside preparation work, we then need to lubricate the pump. Yep. And the first thing we lubricate, which often takes the longest, is lubricating the exhaust valves. Right, we're going to lubricate this whole valve system. The first thing we do is lubricate these. Now it's best to take them in sequence, so you lubricate all of one, and then all of the next, and all of the next. That way you make sure you don't miss anything out. Then once you've lubricated and you've got it quite free, you get this two ounce weight, sit it on top. Hear that clunk? Mm -hmm. That's ideal. Right, that's calibrated. These valves will open up. Now they're all spring loaded, so they're always closed. So the only way they can open up is if a partial vacuum is created inside and, <laughs> and they're sucked up. Right, that's all your valves now lubricated. We're ready to go from this point of view. Back in the days that it operated as, a, as an irrigation pump, the pumps started up, the irrigation started, and it ran for probably 30 days non stop. Now we would put the spark plugs in. This is a large adapter. The spark plug is inside the adapter. You can see it coming out there. That's the earth electrode. There she is, ready to go. They used to call it the monster. There's gas bags which feed gas into the, the top of the pump. The bellows of the bag move in and out. So it's like it's actually breathing when it's operating. Light at the back. Gives us an indicator of the timing. If there's a, uh, a flashback at all towards the, the gas bags to try and prevent the gas bag bursting, then this valve opens and allows the pressure to come out through these slots. And it needs oiling because the oil is the actual seal. This is the compressor, plays a vital role. Right, this, this compressor firstly accepts producer gas and air and combines the two on the outlet to go down into the combustion chamber. So this must work to get your first charge in. Turn it on. The compressor runs. Switch this on to charge. That would then put the charge down to the combustion chamber. To, to see a pump which, which produces some 3,000 3, odd gallons in a, in a single stroke to stand up on top of the surge tanks and watch this big volume of water come out and then watch it spew out into the, the receiving basin. It's, it's just magical. This is the operator, provides a very important function. What sort of preparation goes in hand when you want to start the Humphrey pumps with the operator? The first thing you have to do with this is lubricate it and just check its adjustment. The main thing is the lubrication because the adjustments are pretty right. All of these joints that you can see moving all need oil. So now we look at these points. So we bring that up just to rub. Rub a little bit of um, emery paper to make sure it's, it's um, nicely polished. And we lubricate the pivots in here. And we're, we're ready to start. So to get the pump ready to start, we've got to have to make sure that suction chamber is full of water up to the float level. The water level needs to be up to the white. That in turn floods the valve chamber, which is how the water gets into the pump. There are 450 flat valves in here and they are lightly spring loaded so they're closed. Now when the pressure of the water is on the outside of them, it opens them up and floods this valve chamber internally, so that you pull right up to that float. And the water's up to there, it fills up the inside of the pump to the same height. We would now go down there, and then we would close all those exhaust valves, make sure the whole lot of them are closed, and that gives us then a closed combustion chamber with all valves shut. Now they're spring-loaded, so they're always open. Now when we're starting the engine, and all those locks lock and close. 
then having done that, you're ready to go. You put your hand there, turn the ignition on. You'll hear a whoosh, which means that it's actually a burn. And then they whip these open. And they pull these open until such time as the red is lined up up top. And that allows enough gas in for the second and consequent explosions. And you'll hear whoosh. And then you push that lever forward, wait until that yellow valve goes down, comes up, bounces, comes up solid, press the ignition and then push that forward. After two or three cycles, you'll have enough water going backwards and forwards in the play pipe to operate that cylinder. And as that cylinder operates, then this moves that backwards and forwards and also operates the ignition. So it's all automatic. Fantastic. And by then, of course, these valves are open and she's just running like a clock. It was so unique, unique in its time. It was, a, it was way ahead of anything previous. I should never be forgotten. It was one of the most amazing things that was ever invented. I think young people would thoroughly enjoy the experience of playing with it. Even though it is quite hard work, it is very gratifying. I've, I've never seen anybody go away disappointed once they see that they say that, that's fabulous, you know, we, we should retain something like this for future generations.